this presentation, we're going to be looking at the camera sequencer. It's an editorial tool that lets you create, rearrange, and manipulate camera shots of your scene. With the camera sequencer, you can start to lay out shots in Maya, or you can start by importing your own editorial files containing audio and video clip information in AAF or Final Cut Pro format. We're going to be working with Final Cut Pro on this project, so let's go ahead and jump in there. And what I've got is I've gone ahead and taken some storyboards, and I've just simply cut them together. So we have three shots. We start off in the mission control, we edit into the rocket shot um, that's kind of pulled out, and then we finish off with this little quick time movie of the rocket kind of pulling up. I've also got two audio tracks in my scene, so one of them's just a soundtrack and one of them's a narrative track of the mission control counting down. 14, and what we want to do is we want to take this animatic and all the editing information that we've already started in Final Cut Pro and hand that off into Maya so that we can begin laying this out in 3D. So this is really easy to do. We All we have to do is save out an XML file. And we'll call this one underscore new5. I think that should be a safe one. Let's jump back into Maya, go to our camera sequencer, and let's import in that EDL that we just saved out, which is this guy right here. So let's go ahead and frame the sequence, and I'm going to overscan the camera so that we can see it a little bit more clearly in the viewport. Notice that I have the ability to view time code now, so if you're dealing with editors, you're going to want to be able to talk to them in time code, so Maya 2011 now has that. And the sequencer has basically gone ahead and rebuilt that same exact timeline that we had inside of Final Cut Pro. So we have our three different clips, in our camera sequencer. Each one of these clips has a camera associated to it. It automatically assigns the camera to it when it brings it in through the EDL. If you want to make a change to the camera, it's obviously pretty straightforward. You just select it from the list and make a new connection to a given clip. So what we've got is we've got our three shots. Each one of those cameras that's associated with these shots also has an image plane on it. And those image planes have the same media that Final Cut Pro was editing assigned to them. The final thing that we're going to look at is sound. So if we kind of expand this out here, you'll see that we have our two soundtracks. And let's make sure the sound's turned on. It is, and we'll just play this back just for a second. So 19, 18, 19, Maya now has the ability to play back multiple audio tracks. So this is also something that was new in 2011. So I don't need to see the sound. We'll go and maximize my space here a little bit. So now that we've got the EDL file that came across and the edit points are all set up for us, we want to go ahead and start laying this out in 3D. So to do that, I'm going to go and drop the opacity level on the image plane a little bit so that I can see into my viewport and start to position this geometry um, to line up with the storyboard. So this is inside the control room. We're going to go ahead and just drop the opacity down here. So the control room is basically on the back side of my scene here. So we'll frame in on that control room, kind of spin my guy around here, and we'll start to lay this out. Now at any time I can go back into this and bring up that opacity level and you know use that to help guide the overall layout of my shot. That looks uh, that looks good. So we'll zero that one out. We can jump over to our next shot, which is uh, obviously this rocket here. So we'll drop the opacity down again and we'll really quickly line this stuff up. That looks pretty good. Take this and duplicate it and bring it across. Jump back here and just make sure that we're getting the overall feel of that and I think we are doing a pretty good job of that. So let's uh, finish off with our final shot which is uh, close up of the rocket and this one's actually got a little bit of movement on it so this is uh, the big pull out shot so we'll just frame it on that so if we scrub through our time slider now We've gone ahead and we've done some initial layout. This stuff's all looking pretty good. And I want to start to further refine my pre-visualization. So if you look at what's going on with this character, um, actually I'm going to push it on him a little bit here. I'll get a little tighter. 
on him. I like he goes and gives me the thumbs up. He looks over his shoulder at the spaceship. That's cool, but he kind of does this weird thing at the end, and I'm not really into that. So the animation is good up until about frame, I don't know, I'd say frame 230, 228. So what I want to do is I want to peel back the range of that we're going to be using here to that, to that frame 230. So now if we scrub through this, obviously my character stops where I want him to. He kind of looks over his shoulder, looks at the camera. The problem is we now have a gap here where there's no movement on the character, and then we have this edit. So what I want to do is I want to just scale this clip back out. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm slowing down the animation now. So the animation used to take um, from frame 0 to frame 228, and now that animation is going to last from frame 0 to frame 266. So we've scaled it a little bit. We've slowed down the animation ever so slightly but it gives me the look that I want. So he looks at the camera, the edit happens. So the next thing that we want to do is just a couple of uh, couple camera animations. So we'll go ahead and we'll select this camera. We'll keyframe it. We'll scrub forward in time to right about there. Maybe I'll push it down and kind of fly by that, those uh, radar dishes. We'll keyframe that again. And for this one, the rocket's already animated and taking off. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that this camera goes along for the ride of that rocket. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply select the camera and add to my selection by holding down my shift key, hit the P key to do a parent operation. So what I've done is I've parented the camera into that rocket ship. So it goes along for the ride of that rocket. And I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of secondary animation on top of this camera. So again, we'll just make sure that we have the camera selected. This is my starting point. I like that. We'll go ahead and we'll keyframe it. Right about here, the camera's taking up. I want to get onto the top side of the camera. That looks pretty good. We'll finish this off by going to the tail of the shot. want to introduce in a little bit of twist into that. Get tied up on the nose again. And we'll just keyframe that. So, looks pretty good. The camera is a little abrupt on the takeoff on that shot. So I'm going to just go ahead and pull up my graph editor for that guy. Let's frame everything and just put some flats, tangents on that. So it starts off a little nicer. So now that I've done this, um, at any given time I can go in here and I can tell Maya that I want to play blast these shots. So I can say play blast a sequence or play blast um, each individual shot. Once you've done the play blast of these shots, they're going to be stored off the disk. And any changes that I've made or if I wanted to update the editorial room's uh, take of what I've got, I can just basically do the play blast and then export out an EDL file. That EDL file will basically then have references to my play blast as opposed to the original information that we brought in. So it allows you to basically take stuff, refine it in Maya, hand that back to the editorial department. And to, uh, to finish this off, we're going to go ahead and turn on our sound. Let's jump over to our channel box. I got a little fluids in, in here. We'll rewind our sequence. And we'll play this back. So that's just a quick example of how we can use a new camera sequencer to start to cut together some clips inside of Maya or take some information from some other applications that support AAF or Final Cut Pro. And um, it's a great new tool.